I want to share with you how to find a mentor. So I'm going to do that. Um, but first things first, we need to switch the problem from finding a mentor to creating a mentor because I live in a world where we don't seek and find things, but we create things. And so mentors are not found, they're created. So let's change the question. <clears throat> how do I create a mentor? Well, first things first, you want to create who that person is in your reality by <clears throat> determining what you actually want to learn and who's great at that. Okay, cool. So how do I create them in my world? Well, identify who they are and speak to them. Well, how do I speak to them? Well, just reach out to them, talk to them, ask them questions. And here's where it starts to get fun and interesting is stop thinking that because you don't know them and they don't know you or they're busy or they might not have time for you or they might cost a lot more money to talk to than you have in your pocket, <clears throat> that that's a reason for you to hold back in your asking. You actually want to show up in their world as if everything that you could ask for is okay and that all of the ideas that they have about how they're using their time is just an idea and that actually there may be a different way for you for them to use some of the time in their 24 hours every day and what that difference may actually be in helping you. So why? Why would that why would they want to help you? Well, you actually uh, want to look at this as an opportunity for you to become the rare person that would be in their interest to support. So how do you do that? Do you have to go and be something you're not just so that they'll help you? No, no, no. What if there's an aspect of who I am and my potential and my capacity that if I were expressing would have that person want to spend time with me? What might that be? I have found in my life with my ability to create mentors in every area that I've gone into, I've done it in the real estate industry, in the web media industry, and I've done it now in the personal development, spiritual growth industry. Um, I've found the best people in the world at what they do, and I've had them want to help me, to spend time helping me. Um, how have I done that? I've said to myself, who, how can I take what I learned from them and bring it to life in such a way where I get all of the value from what they're sharing and then some, and then also how can I let them know that that's occurring? Because when a person experiences that what they are and what they do has value for a person and makes a difference, then they pay attention to that. It gives people a sense of satisfaction on, on a very superficial level, but a sense of meaning. And so all of the mentors that I have my experience is that they want to actually mentor me because they know that when they mentor me, they have traction. Like what they share with me and what they show me, I take it and I do something with it. And now I'm in a position very often where people are reaching out to me and asking for support. And the most common way that it goes is number one, their first reaching out is timid. They don't have any really zest and willingness to be like to, to show up and ask. And they also just uh, will will tread lightly on questions around asking for my support and, and things like that. And so it's like, if that if there's a timidity in even um, asking for help in such a way, then there's no way that we could have a conversation where I could even offer you something where if you were to do something with it, I would get the experience that's very meaningful for me because you went and did something. I would say out of, if it was 100 people, probably 90 right off the bat won't even bother reaching out. If 100 people that would like to and want to. Of the, of the 10 that do reach out, seven or eight are going to be very timid, timid. A few of them are going to be really direct and really ask for support. And it's because it's so rare, I pretty much always have the time and capacity to respond to that. But that's just, this is where the, the two out of those three fall off, is that I give something <clears throat> for them to do. I challenge them. I ask them to do something. And two out of the three, I never hear from them again. It's like crickets. If, if, and so what I'm going to give you is useful and you don't go and actually do something with it, then it's like, well, I'm not going to keep giving you things and sharing things with you if you're not going to do anything with it. But that one person who's willing to ask and who actually goes and does it and who comes back, it's like, wow, I'm fucking paying attention because that is rare. Most people are too afraid to ask. Most people that do ask don't actually do anything with the answer. And so if you're going to both ask and do with, and do with what I give you the answer, shit, I'm interested in that. And that's, you know where I'm putting my attention now when I'm mentoring, but when I'm grading my mentors, which I'm still always and actively doing, I'm looking for 
how I can show up in such a way that's a full expression of the ideas they've given me. So if somebody says, do this, I suggest this, oh, you can bet I'm gonna do it, and you can bet that I'm gonna get back to them and let them know that not only I did it, but the impact it had on me and the impact it rippled out for me onto others. And every time that I've done that with a person, they've been interested in spending more time with me. Now, that's how you create a mentor. It's really, so, the existence of mentors in your life is not the absence of you knowing how necessarily, um, especially now that you've seen this video, the absence of powerful mentorship in your life is going to be how you show up in the context of your relating to people who have capacities that you want to learn, who have abilities that you want to learn. So the two things you wanna bring into your being, number one is a chutzpah in your willingness to ask for help. That's number one, just fucking ask. Ask for exactly what you want. Don't hold back. Don't even think that because they've got some rules or structures out there that say this is the only way it can be done. This is the way it happens. This is the way, this is how available or not available I am. Who gives a shit? You know, just, I, I remember that I was, I wanted to talk to this mentor once and they was told us a long waiting list and I said, great, what needs to happen for me to be on the top? And suddenly I was in conversation. Not for any reason other than because I asked. My coach, Rich Litvin, when I first wanted to work with him, I had maybe a grand in my bank account. That was it. And he was charging 50 grand, 55 grand for his coaching. And it's like, I just kept showing up in his email inbox. I'm going to be there every day asking for help. And he's gonna, he was giving me answers and I was going and doing it and coming back again. So he's paying attention to me. And then suddenly, somehow, there was an opportunity for him to create something really big. It's personal for me where I could be in conversation with them once a month for $1,000. And guess how much money I had? $1,000. So I signed up and that was the beginning of a paid relationship. But it only happened because I was willing to show up and ask for what I wanted despite all the things that he was saying were available not being that. There's a persistence. So that's number one, right? Just ask. Get, what is it that you want? Ask. Don't give a shit what's, what's on offer. Number two is whatever they come back with, go and do it. Don't do it necessarily just to pander to them. Do it as an exploration, as a creation of who you are, to express your full capacity to be that. Embody it, live it, experience it, share it through your being and also through your own words. And so that you can go back to that person as quickly as you said you'd do it or quicker and let them know, hey, I did this. Here's what I experienced. Here's what I saw. Here's the impact it had on me. Here's the impact it had on others. Here's my next question. And I think you'll find that from that next question, you'll receive even more time and more of an answer and it will grow you. And uh, you'll end up in the position of being a mentor yourself one day and implicitly, intrinsically, intuitively, you'll also be relating to people who want to be mentored by you in this way because you've been through it. That was 180 miles an hour, but I hope you got it all. If not, hey, go back and play it again in half speed. Soak it up, get the information, get the insight, try it on. If you want to learn more about how to create not just mentors, but literally anything in your life, I know that sounds overzealous, but I actually mean it, then go to creating.school, click the link wherever it is, and uh, join me because I've got a community of people where I'm helping uh, to learn how to do this. You create from the inside and on the outside. Your spiritual peace, relaxedness, your love, your ease with life, that's the foundation. And on the outside, you can make all the shit you want happen. All the money, all the love, all the sex, all the health, all the fitness, all of it, all of it, all of it. Check the link. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.